It is a cold night. Uh, it's a springtime, so I'm observing the Veil Nebula using the window of opportunity of the down sky. I'm using the Nagler 31 mm type tape five uh, eyepiece, 82 degrees, and. Uh, using the oxygen tree filter, the bother oxygen tree filter. If we show the glow of the nebula very well actually. I can see the eastern part and western part. It's quite huge and it's, you can see it's roundish. And uh, yeah, that's quite interesting. And I'm not surprised I say this is a remnant of a supernova probably. Uh, is there a supernova remnant uh, or neutron star somewhere in the middle of it? I've not seen any reference to it so far. I may be wrong, but it's very huge. It's, uh, when you see the whole structure and this eyepiece can show you at each time a bit of the west or east side of it. Yeah, it looks round and uh, when you consider the whole structure, it can be a supernova remnant. <coughs> the telescope I'm using, the Skywatcher Skyliner uh, 300p 12 inch Dobsonian telescope, focal lens is 1500 and divided by 31, it gets, gives a low magnification of 41. I could uh, have a Max vision, probably max vision 68 degrees 40 millimeter would give me a slightly wider field of view. I just wanted to test this snagler, give it a chance. It's quite expensive, I think, at the same time. But at the same time, uh, I've not used it much, so I hope this is a good use of it at this moment. And this nebula is dwarf. I can say the Weyl Nebula is not as bright as the M42, for example, the Great Orion Nebula. But uh, when you get used to the sight of it, you can see that it is actually a wispy, greyish kind of uh, appearance in the eyepiece with this oxygen tree filter also. So don't expect a very bright one like the Orion Nebula, that's the exceptional thing. But it's, it's, not, it's not very dim. For example, if I turn off this flash now and uh, the light that I'm using in my head, the red light, um, it takes a while, a few seconds just to see it. But that's, that's, that's there, you can see it easy. Wow, max vision of 40 millimeters, 68 degrees IPS, covers the whole nebula, <laughs> or most of it. This easily beats the Nagler 31. <laughs> the only problem is that I can see something like a reflection, two reflections, probably because of the filter. Yeah reflection from the inside of the filter. Other than that, that's perfect. You can see the whole vastness of the nebula with this oxygen tree filter. Oh, okay, and uh, th those reflections have disappeared. <laughs> I was slightly out of focus, and I was sitting and I was trying to reach the eyepiece, uh, and I was not looking directly into the eyepiece. So now I look directly, those reflections are gone. 
the wispiness of this uh, nebula is amazing. You can see so much details. It's like feathers here and there. I should, I, th I think they should be calling this uh, um, feather nebula or something like that. One part of it definitely, definitely looked like a face of the uh, George Washington, that uh, slave owner, American slave owner, and uh, first first president or something like that of uh, USA. Okay, uh, I'm using now the Meat Super Fossil 56 millimeter eyepiece. It's quite wide field for this purpose. It gives me the lowest magnification possible. I can see more of the nebula in the field of view without moving it too much. What I did, I did an experiment. I removed the filter oxygen 3 filter, butter, uh, butter brand, and um, yeah, looked at the whale nebula without the filter, and it completely disappeared. You could see some wispiness if you look carefully around the stars, and so, but not much. You can imagine because you already know where it is. Uh, but the moment you put the oxygen 3 filter, uh, it comes back to the view, it pops in to the view. So don't expect to see it without the filter, it's not easy. I think of these three eyepieces that I used, the uh, Super Puzzle Mid 56mm, Max Vision 40mm, 68 degrees, and uh, Nagler 31 Take 5. I think I prefer Nagler one. Main reason I think is that because it gives the uh, highest magnification means that the sky background will be darker and 40 millimeter and 56 millimeter give more of the sky and increases a little bit of the light pollution creeps into the um, view so Nagler is better and also you can see slightly a tad more detail in the nebula uh, if you spend enough time of course I'm looking at the whale nebula, of course, and using the Butter's Butter Planetarium uh, eight nanometer oxygen three uh, filter. Of course, the whale nebula is very huge uh, celestial object. It's a supernova remnant, as they say. And you, at any time, you can see portions of it. So I'm super. I've superimposed there what you can see and sketch visually on the image of the nebula. So these are the parts we see in the eyepiece. And this, uh, in this wonderful zoom video, you can actually see where, where is the whale nebula. We are going now to the Cygnus star cloud. And you can see, left to the center, you can see the whale nebula, the, what I call George Washington nebula. And now we are going to the portion which is called Venus Belt. And that's the Venus belt. We are not going to zoom into that. That's the star gives the uh, illusion of a buckle of a belt, as they have imagined. You can see there is magnetic field. Definitely here there is some magnetic field effect. There must be magnetic field in this cloud. You can see the shape of it. It's very strange, like a DNA uh, molecule. Anyway, very huge structure, of course, we know.